many genetic and environmental factors can cause tumours to form. For instance, UV radiation from the sun can damage DNA and other structures in melanocytes, which are the pigment-producing cells in the skin. Chronic damage to melanocytes by UV radiation leads to most cases of melanoma, which is a type of skin cancer. As melanomas grow, they can eventually spread to other sites in the body, such as the lungs and liver. The cells of the immune system are continuously monitoring our tissues. Natural killer cells, or NK cells, sense stress-associated molecules on damaged and cancerous cells. Dendritic cells, or DCs, activate cytotoxic T cells, which can then sense tumor-associated antigens using their T cell receptor and other co-receptors. Once activated, NK cells and cytotoxic T cells release perforin and granzymes. These molecules punch holes in the surface of the tumor cells, causing them to die by apoptosis. Helper T cells support these responses. They help DCs to activate cytotoxic T cells and they produce cytokines such as interferon gamma that recruit and activate more NK cells. As the tumour evolves, genetic changes occur that can give some tumour cells a survival advantage. This means tumours are often heterogeneous. For instance, tumour cells may no longer express the molecules that are sensed by the killer immune cells. As the immune system continues to kill the tumour cells it can recognise, the cells it can't sense become more prevalent. This is immunoediting. It leads to the emergence of a tumour that can't be detected by the immune system. Some tumour cells actively suppress T cells by expressing inhibitory molecules such as PDL1. PDL1 binds to the PD1 receptor on T cells and deactivates them. This is an immune checkpoint. In addition, tumour cells can attract immune cells that suppress the activity of other immune cells, thereby supporting tumour growth. These immunosuppressive cells include regulatory T cells and certain types of myeloid cells. Therefore, the tumour microenvironment is like the scene of a battle between two opposing immune responses. One side of the immune system is attacking the tumour, while the other side is helping it to grow. Scientists are developing immunotherapies to help strengthen the immune attack. One approach is adoptive T-cell transfer. Cytotoxic T-cells taken from patients with melanoma are selected for their ability to attack tumour cells. The best killers are infused back into the patient. Treating patients with cytokines, such as interleukin-2 and interferon-alpha, can also boost the activity of anti-tumor immune cells. An alternative approach is to target the immune checkpoints. For instance, antibodies that bind to PD-1 stop this molecule from switching off cytotoxic T cells. Another immune checkpoint being targeted is CTLA4. Blocking this molecule helps DCs to drive anti-tumor T-cell responses. Not all patients will respond to these immunotherapies and some responses will be delayed. Combining immunotherapies with chemotherapy or radiotherapy can lead to a better response in some patients. Immunotherapies can themselves be combined. For example, PD-1 and CTLA-4 blockade can improve responses when administered in combination. Activating the immune system has risks. Some patients develop harmful side effects when their immune system attacks healthy cells. Nevertheless, there have been encouraging results from clinical trials. This animation has focused on melanoma, but it's becoming clear that immunotherapies can be used to treat many different types of cancer.